Zero Accounting Software 2023. Income from bank feeds with bank rules. One customer, but two income accounts. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Focusrite Scarlet Solo 3rd Gen USB Interface with Software Suite. I've been using a Focusrite for years for my audio needs, before which time I had a USB microphone which plugged directly into the computer. But I think you'll find, as I have found, if you want to increase the quality of your microphone, you will need an interface, and the Focusrite is the go-to interface as far as I'm concerned. I've been using this for years now. It works well, it's easy to use, it seems quite durably built. Because I only do the screen recordings, I only need the one solo interface. However, if you have multiple microphones you need to plug in, or if you have other instruments you need to plug in, you can look at a similar model that has more input ports. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well-organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom zero homepage. Going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, the bank feed file. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. We're gonna right click on that tab up top and then duplicate it. And then right click on the tab up top again and duplicate it again. Back to the middle tab, go into the accounting drop down, opening up the balance sheet report. Tabbing to the right, accounting drop down, this time the income statement report. We're going to change the dates on the income statement to 2022 because that's the year that our uh, transactions are in from the bank feeds, January to December of 2022. Update. Let's go to the first tab. We're gonna to go to the accounting dropdown into our bank feeds, which is under the bank accounts. We've got our one account connected thus far. We're gonna to go to the dropdown for the manage of the accounts, account transactions. So we're now gonna keep on adding some of the deposit side of things, trying to construct our income statement from the deposits, noting that we're kind of assuming at this time, we're imagining we're doing like gig work or something so that it's fairly easy for us to wait till something clears the bank and record it as revenue when it does. If I go into the cash coding over here, uh, the new thing we're gonna do if I, if I sort by the payee is we're gonna say, what if uh, we've got different kinds of deposits coming from the same customer. And this could be a similar kind of thing that you would have on the expense side of things. What if, for example, you had different kinds of expenses or different kinds of accounts for the same vendor? On the expense side, when money's going out, it might be for like a office depot or Home Depot or something where you might normally buy supplies, but sometimes you might be buying uh, equipment or something like that and you might say is there any way I can differentiate the information in the account to make that differentiation sometimes that might be by the dollar amount but here we're specifically looking at the added detail so for for example here you might have multiple types of income coming from Amazon right you might have book sales you might have uh, you might have Amazon affiliate marketing. You might be selling inventory on Amazon. So is there a way that I can distinguish, you might have different locations from Amazon. Where is it being sold in or something like that? So we could look in here and try to say, is there anything in this added detailed information that can help me distinguish uh, between one type of income and the other? So for example, here, even in the payee line, 
they have Amazon, which is really the, the customer you would think would simply be Amazon, but you have this differentiating factor with the income and the California. Now, if that ties into two different sources of income, you can use that as a differentiation factor. Now, even this description, sometimes the bank feed memo information comes in and possibly you might end up with a different number, for example, that might indicate different kinds of locations. So you might be able to get into a little bit more detail on the memo description and see if there's a differentiating factor that might be indicating different locations or something like that, which could help you to make more detailed bank rules and break out the uh, different customer payments for different things to separate accounts. So let's go back to the reconcile tab. Okay, so let's add the detail here. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna assume this one. I wanna make a specific rule differentiating uh, this amazon.com from that amazon.california, for example. So let's go into here and say, uh, add a rule, or let's add the detail first, because I wanna add an account as I go. Now, when, you, when you're gonna create an actual uh, customer, notice that you could just call it Amazon, right? I could just call it Amazon as the customer and have one customer for, uh, for multiple different rules and still be able to apply it to different accounts. Or you might wanna have a separate customer. So I'm gonna add some of that differentiation factor here so that I can track it in different customer fields. So if I sort it by customer, it's gonna be a different customer, even though really it's, it's the same kind of overall company of Amazon. So that's an option you can have. I go down here, it's gonna be, I'm not gonna have an item description. The account that it's gonna to go to, I'm gonna make up another account here and break it out and I'm gonna call it, let's pretend that this one is, let me see what revenue accounts I'm on here. What's my account number? My account number is uh, 34354360, let's say 4360. So 4360 on the account number, it's gonna be a revenue type of account. So I'm gonna say it'll be a revenue type and then I'm gonna call it Amazon Prime. So that's like similar to YouTube or if you, if you uploaded movies or something like that, then that type of income. So let's say I can differentiate, I'm just making this up, but let's say we're gonna differentiate uh, in that fashion and put this to Amazon Prime account. So I'm gonna say, all right, let's save that. And then I can make a rule for that if I wanted to, hitting the options uh, button now that I have my account entered and create a bank rule. Let's create a bank rule. And it's gonna be any conditions match, that's fine. It's gonna be, if you have any, uh, I like any text field. I, lo I love that they have that option of any text field, which it isn't often there in other softwares like, uh, like a QuickBooks, because that allows you to use uh, the rule to apply to all you know all the text fields you don't have to say well is this a description or is this the memo field or something like that when you're trying to put these more detailed uh, rules in there and then i can say i want it to contain uh i want it to uh contain and we only really need the contain you could do exact here but i still just may make it contain and i just want to make sure that it contains the portion that is different, the differentiating portions from the other rule. Now, if we wanted a rule to pull in all Amazon items, all Amazon related stuff to the same account, then I would wanna make a more generic rule, possibly saying, if it contains Amazon, just do this to it. But if I wanna differentiate them, I can include that differentiating factor, which is this bit, and make sure that that's in there so it will only apply it to that differentiating factor. Now, if there was more information that I needed to differentiate, such as the description here, again, I could use an any text field to do that, but then I can pick up the piece of the number that's a differentiating factor, or I can have the two line items and say you wanna make sure that it, that it matches all uh, of them, all the rules in order to, to get it. But I, this should be enough with just one for now. So I'm gonna remove that second one. I'm gonna call it uh, Amazon, can I just copy it? No, I can't copy it. Uh, let's copy it down here. I'm gonna call this amazon.com. So I'm gonna copy and paste that there. And that's gonna be my new contact. So, and again, I made a different 
Amazon.com, not just Amazon. Uh, so that'll be differentiating from, I think the other one was Amazon.California or something, uh, CA. And so down here, I'm gonna say the account is going to be the income account of Amazon Prime. 100% going to it. And then I'll just take it to the reference. That looks good. So if we save this, and then I can uh, record it. So so now the, these two are both being pulled in because they're amazon.com. Uh, so I can pull both of those in and check it out. If I go to my balance sheet and update it, the checking account should go up by those massive amounts in here. But the other side is gonna go to the income statement, updating the income statement into the new income account, Amazon Prime. If I go into it, we're racking in the, the money, almost $8 right there. That's what I'm talking about. We're, we're So there it is, amazon.com receive money form. All right, back on over. Now the other one, if we have received money from Amazon for something else, I can go back over here and put it into a different category. So let's pick this one up now. I, and so this one is from Amazon, but it's slightly different. So if I wanna make it a different category, I could say, let's add the details and say that this one is going to be from, now I could use the same uh, name up top, but maybe I want to differentiate it. So I'm going to say it's from a different Amazon so that I have a different customer uh, that will be set up, or you could use the same customer uh, if you so choose. Uh, but I can differentiate the account down here and I can set up a differentiating rule based on the information that's pulling through. So I'm gonna add another account and say, let's say this is gonna be uh, a 4365 account, let's say, new, let's say 4370, 4370. And this is gonna be a revenue type of account. And uh, hold on, revenue. And it's gonna be for, let's say these are uh, book sales, book, sales we're selling books on amazon our book you can go in and check it out we're making this isn't really for books i'm just kind of making this up but there it is we're going to say okay boom and then let's make a rule for it so i'm going to go up top now that i have my account added options drop down and i'm going to say we want to make a bank rule and we will make a rule so it's going to be it uh, any text field I like, and then if it contains, and I'm just gonna make sure to have that differentiating fa factor, which is the Amazon service, as opposed to the other Amazon, and there it is. And then I'm gonna just delete the second bit because I don't need it. And I'm gonna say contact, I'm gonna make a new contact, which is gonna be Amazon services, slightly different than amazon.com for the last one so we can sort our two items in different contacts or customers. And then 100% of it is gonna be going to that new account we set up, which is book sales, all right? And then let's save it. And the rule should be applied, differentiating the rule. And if I scroll down, there it is. So I'm gonna add that one. And so now if I go to my checking account, it's gonna be an increase to the checking account but I wanna to go to my income statement. That's really where we differentiated things on the income statement. And now we've got our book sales. So we have the two rules being applied out, even though they're basically being coming from the same place. All right, let's go back to the tab to the left. Let's just add uh, some other income items. So here's like an audible income. So this would be like, uh, uh, an, an, you could make it. So I'm gonna say, let's add the details on that one and we'll make a rule for it. I'll make another account for it. So maybe I just wanna call it audible, but I'll leave that for now because I'll adjust it on the rule anyways. And I'm gonna make another account for it. So this is gonna be an income account, which I'll call uh, 4380, 4380 on the number, 4380. And I'm just gonna call it that audible income. So I had to sneeze there for a second. I'll just call it audible, audible, uh, book, audio books, audi audible books, sales, <laughs> something like that. All right. And then I'm going to say, all right, 
Uh, hold on. That's the account. That should be down here. Audible book sales. And this should be revenue. Revenue. And that looks good. All right, let's save it. And let's go up and make a rule drop down. Drop down. Create a rule. There are rules here. And I'm just going to make a standard rule uh, text, any text field. If it contains, and I don't need the payments bit, maybe just audible. That's all I need. If it has that, then do it. Get rid of the second thing. I'm going to copy audible down here. That's going to be my new customer contact, adding it. And then we're going to say the account is going to be the audible account. Huh, right there. And there it is. And then, so that looks good. Let's go and save it. And then if I go to my income statement, just to check it out, or oh, hold on, I didn't add it yet. You got to add it. And then income statement, update, we can see uh, book sales pulling through. All right, let's go back to the first tab. Let's just add some more of these here. So let's just go through these and just add them. So audible, I'll just add that and Amazon Verizon. Let's just go ahead and add the Verizon and I'll just kind of clean this up a bit and add them as we go. Uh, Google, here's a Google one. Let's say that's YouTube. So it is YouTube, we'll just say that's YouTube. Okay, so we'll add that and we're gonna say, I'll just call it uh, YouTube. So I'll copy YouTube and then down here, I'll make another account and say it's revenue i'm going to say 4390 so i'm going to say all right new one new account 4390 and i'm going to say the account type is a revenue account and it's going to be for youtube and then save it and that's all we need to make the rules so i'm going to hit the drop down up top keeps doing that drop down create a bank rule it's going to be contained one. I'm going to say any text field. If it has Google in it, I don't need, or just say YouTube. If it just has YouTube in it. That's all I need. Then do it. I'm going to delete this bit. YouTube's my new. Uh, now, again, I could put the, the vendor as Google here uh, or, or YouTube, right? It kind of depends or the customer, the contact. I'm just going to call it YouTube which probably isn't the most proper, should have called it Google, but whatever. YouTube is the account we set up and then it's going to go boom. All right, let's add it and let's add it. And then uh, let's check these off. So Amazon, I can check that one off. Audible, I'll check that one off. Uh, let's add interest that's from the bank so I'll add that one so let's add the details here we're just gonna say that's an interest payment so okay so let's just add the account it should be an interest account an expense type of account so revenue expense uh, this is interest income <laughs> this is a income account right because it's an interest payment received all right, interest income. We don't have any interest income here, so I'm going to say income. It's going to let's put it up uh, in revenue. You might put it in other income, like at the bottom of the income statement, because it's not like part of your normal operations. So maybe we put it in other. Uh, so I'll put it down next to the seven five. So set, let's make it seven five five zero. Let's say add and seven five five zero, and this is going to be. Uh, uh, in uh, other other income, and I'm gonna call it interest interest income, and then save it. Okay, and let's see if I'm I'm gonna add the rule for it. Adding a rule, bank rule. And I'm just anything and I'm going to say this is going to be a any text field if it contains interest payment that should be good. All right, any it's going to be let's call it from 
Uh, who's it coming from? I can say the bank, I guess. Bank. <laughs> Generic customer. And then the account is going to be the interest income account that we just set up. Okay. And I'll put this. I've been doing reference on that. Okay. And then the rule, if it says interest payment, all right, that'll be the, the rule. You could call it bank interest or something. You could, you don't have to name the rule the same as coming through the bank memo, but we'll keep it there. So I'll save it and let's go down and say interest. Is there serious? Do I want to add that? I don't know. Let's go Verizon. Let's go ahead and add the Verizon next. And we've got the SoCal gas. Eh, do I want to add that? I guess I could add that. Amazon. Let's add the Amazons. Uh, and th this is another Amazon. I could add that. Let's leave that for now in case I want to test anything else. Audible, interest payment. Okay. So then if I go back to my uh, balance sheet and update this, uh, my my checking account is still uh, in the negative <laughs> as a liability, but my income over here on the income side of things, we've now got our, our prime account, audible, book sales, sales, uh, the web sales, and that interest account is down here. It's down under uh, interest income because we put it into other income down below. It seems like the YouTube one didn't pull in for some reason. Let me add the YouTube one again. I'm going to say YouTube and we'll say the account should be YouTube, right? Didn't I add a YouTube account? I did. And then if I made a rule up top, if we make the rule, bank rule, I'm going to say this as long as it contains YouTube, maybe I'll keep the Google YouTube as long as it contains. Maybe I, maybe I made a rule that wasn't contained. I should check my rules. Uh, but in any case, let's go in here and say uh, any text field if it contains that. And then I'll delete the second bit. And then it's going to be the contact is YouTube we already set up and then I'm going to say it's going to be an account of YouTube and then that's good and then I'll call it I'll keep the whole I'll call it Google YouTube this time which I think is a different name all right let's save that see if it applies out the rule so there's the rule being applied okay so now I can add that uh, Siri let's go ahead and add that and then next and we got google here we'll add that all right so if i go back to the balance sheet update it uh still have a negative cash income statement update it we can now see the google uh pulling through the youtube pulling through all right so now if i go to the first tab if i want to check those rules i can go to the accounting drop down bank banking let's see if i have two google rules which i probably do if i look at my bank rules and i want to update them i i can go into my rules here so these are my spend money rules here's my receive money rules so we've got stripe we've got amazon and then we've got these two google rules so something's wrong with this first one so if i go in and edit it let me just see what i did that didn't work. I, I, I said equals. See that equals? And then I deleted the text. If I put contains, it would have been. So now I've got two rules. So I'm going to go back and see if I can remove that second rule. So this is a, a, a Google rule. So I think it's this one. <laughs> Hopefully I don't delete the wrong one. Uh, I'm going to take, take that off and delete it. And so are you sure you want to delete it? I'm going to say, yeah. So the rule has been deleted. All right, so now if I go back into my account and I go to my bank accounts here, we could see uh, that we've added, we've cleaned up a lot of uh, information and pulled them in. I'm going back to my bank feeds and we've applied 
uh, many of the rules. We've been building our account transactions in the same way we did with the expense side, building them as we pull it in, then the bank rules should make it more automated uh, for future presentations. We've been reconciling at the same time we make the rules. We've also, if I go to my contacts drop down, I could see that I've been adding uh, contacts. Uh, in this case, I'd say customers, uh, as we've been making those rules as well. And then we've been building out our income statement, breaking the general rule of not adding income accounts by customer because we happen to be doing like gig work, which is kind of the exception to the rule oftentimes. All right, and then remember that income account, interest account was down here. All right, let's look at our trial balance, right click, duplicate, taking a look at the trustee trial balance, seeing where we stand as of this point in time, accounting drop down, reports, trial balance is what we're looking for. The trustee T to the B, not tuberculosis, not tuberculosis, trial balance. And you've got the balance sheet accounts on top of the income statement accounts, the balance sheet stops at retained earnings, sales, and then our income accounts, our revenue accounts or sales accounts. And then we've got our uh, expense accounts down below. We're in balance, debits and credits is the same thing as basically saying assets equal liabilities plus equity uh, that we could see here and here. And the income statement fits into the balance sheet because it is summarized in you know the current earnings and the equity, 694954, which is also on the income statement, bottom line, 694954, the income statement breaking out the detail of our performance uh, report.